Okay, good morning everyone from Penang. I'm in Penang, Malaysia. Uh, Jane Xian is with me. Uh, she's in Taipei and Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Harshita was here a moment ago with her webcam. She's in India, in Delhi, New Delhi. And, um, and you're welcome to stay here. And uh, we like to have faces on the screen. And let's see, we have Michael Birch has joined us and also Rosemary uh, Ribera. Ferrier, Ferrier, and uh, Carol Phelps Ogden is here as well. And we're not crowded right now, so you're quite welcome to be here. So I'm Vance Stevens, and as I said, I'm in Penang, Malaysia. Hello, Michael. How are you? And um, this is uh, the best of EVO 2020. It's uh, an event that was scheduled in uh, TESOL in Denver, which unfortunately had to be canceled. And so anyway, this is also a Learning Together event. Um, I uh, host Learning Together. And let's see, let me start a screen share here so that I can show you some of these things as I'm talking. Um, let's see, where is Learning Together? Must be over here. Okay. This is Learning Together. It's, uh, this is what I put up last night. There's a, an audio recording from our session last night. This is at learningtogether.net. Um, I can, I'll put this in the chat since we're recording now. I'll just put this in the chat. So here it is. That's the, uh, the link for our recording last night. Um, there is introductory material. I'll, I'll have a table of contents up here later on. That's just the audio. You can hear that if you want. And there's also the video from last night down, uh, down here. Uh, I'll, I put all this information also in the Best of EVO um, document that we all share. That's this one. I've got these navigations all over the place in that document. And that, um, that's the table of contents. And this is what we're doing today. We're doing the uh, Best of EVO 2020, not canceled, but moved online. And uh, let's see, where are we now? We're on Saturday, April 4th, and it's almost 10 minutes till 2 a.m. Uh, here's our schedule for today. Uh, we actually didn't have a, uh, anyone fill in. I think we had something there, but it got moved. And um, I know why. It, I had thought Heike was going to present at 2 a.m., and I scheduled her there. And then now it was 2 p.m., so uh, we rescheduled that for this afternoon. But no one took the slot. So we have um, Harshita going to talk to us about getting online as, an ultra, as a teacherpreneur. And Rosemary is going to talk to us about uh, tools for student collaboration, Padlet. And she was a uh, supposed to be a moderator, but situation in Bolivia prevented her from doing that. So she's going to talk to us from a participant perspective and how she went ahead and uh, participated in the course despite not being able to moderate as planned. And then Judy Wong and Cheryl McCoy are going to come on and talk about teaching EFL to young learners. So uh, everybody gets 20 minutes, but if you go 20, not 25 or so, we're not going to be upset. So just keep an eye on the time. We'd, we'd like to wrap up by uh, 4 UTC. And also, we would like to have time for questions. So if people want to ask questions, this is a small crowd right now. Um, you're quite welcome to open your mic and talk to us. And um, also, though, if you're not talking to us, please mute your mic. The 57 people last night, 56 of them were very uh, good about that. And uh, so, and I just had to mute anybody I heard sounds from. So it was not a big problem. So anyway, it, was, it worked very well. So we're trying to be open and have conversations with uh, presenters if we have that, that uh, leisure. So this is uh, our presentation just about what EVO is about. I don't know, Jane, do you want to walk us through it? 
we, we did some of it last night. Maybe we could skip quickly over what we did last night. We talked about this last night where EVO came from. So it's on the recording from before. I think Christine was here and talked to us about this. So uh, anyway, there's the information for the record. Yep, Shall I skip? There's mm -hmm. 13, it, 1,315 1, participants from 72 countries and mm -hmm. who joined us uh, this year. And um, the call for proposal uh, will be out in on June 22nd and it'll the deadline is September 13th if you're thinking about um, submitting a, a proposal and next year's EVO will be uh, during January 9th and to uh, and February 14th five five weeks we have to work on Valentine's Day <laughs> okay anyway um, yeah and that's at evosessions.org or evosessions.pbworks.com, whichever you prefer. And maybe uh, I could put this, uh, I'll put that link in. That's how you find out all about EVO. So, so I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can you go back to that slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I could type this in chat. But, oh, um, back one. No, no, sorry, I'm trying to get back. So it's where it said call for proposals. Mm-hmm. 20 seconds. September 13th, is that 2020? That's, uh, let's that's see. That's 2020, yeah, that's 2020. That's a mistake. It's uh, a call. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, let <laughs> we'll me change that. that really quick. You didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I can fix that. I'll stop the share and go into that presentation and erase that little glitch. No, I. I You've done is it already. It, is it done? I, is, no. is it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put in the link to the uh, okay. EVO sessions. Mm -hmm. Thank you for pointing that yes, out. Yes, for pointing that out. Okay, so anyway, I just put in the text chat the link to uh, EVO sessions. And by the way, all this, uh, if you go to our uh, big. Um, our big document, the tinyurl.com uh, sla uh, slash best 2020 EVO, mm -hmm. the one that probably got you here, you'll find uh, all of these, uh, you'll find all of this information, all these links. So let me see. Okay. I hit the share button. Nope. What happened there? It's not, uh, not refreshed. Go back and refresh and see if I can get that to come on. Oh, because I'm presenting? Maybe. Okay, uh, no. Um, oh, I'll, I'll change it. 2020. Okay, I got it. All right. So, uh, back to the share. So, this is the way we work here, folks. We're, we're very informal, especially when we have a lot of time. Okay. Any other comments as we get going? Get back into the swing of things here. Okay, magic. Uh, I'll continue that presentation. There we go. There we are. So everything was fine all along, wasn't it? Okay, this is the people who are coordinating the EVO, Electronic Village Online. And uh, I'm up at the top right, and Jane is three down on the left, and all these other people. You, you see this, by the way, if you go to evosessions.org, that's on that front page there. These are the people who organize EVO. These are all the 15 sessions, the logos for all the 15 sessions. I don't know, Jane, do you want to um. take over? Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday, um, classroom-based research for for professional development and also mentoring research, teacher mm -hmm. research, research uh -huh. um, they presented. Yes, actually, all, yeah, I can I can uh, sweep ahead because these are all the sessions. All these okay. link. Uh, I, I like that fifteen. I put that up there in the corner there. 
So all of these, if you go to this uh, slideshow, which is linked in the, uh, in the big Google Doc, then you'll, you can link to all these, and you can link to them anyway in so many different places. This is what we did yesterday. These, we had all these sessions, and we had mentoring teacher research, we had TechnoQuill, and we had uh, CF, C, Sefer, she called it Sefer versus Assessment, Maha Hassan, and Nelly talked told us about Noodle, Noodle for Teachers and Tools for Student Collaboration. Now, uh, Rosemary is going to talk to us today about Padlet, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're doing today. So it's the, oh, the, the Ford, the Ford of April. Okay, you all go and fix that as well. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we're going to have teacher, uh, teaching, getting online as a teacherpreneur. And I believe Harshita is ready to go. And uh, Rosemary will come next. And then uh, I suppose when, maybe I should go and look and see if there's anybody waiting to get in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, what else would you like to say? Uh, anything else we need to talk, we need to say about EVO? Well, I think we're ready to begin if uh, there's more joining us in the waiting room. I don't know. I'm just going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. Uh, oh, you fixed it already. Saturday, April 4th. Well done. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yes, let me find the Zoom room over here. Zoom. Uh, no, I don't see anybody waiting to get in. So everybody's here. Okay. So it's just, okay. just six of us today. Very small party. Yeah. And um, so we're going to talk to Harshita. I was just, um, I, I'm quite interested in her work because she, uh, she has, uh, she hosts something called codewizacademy.com. And I was just having a look at it. It's a place where she teaches um, coding. Uh, I'm quite interested in some of my presentations at conferences recently have been about using coding in uh, language learning. So I'm sort of interested in that. Uh, I'm also interested in the fact that she um, uh, she is certified as a cybercrime investigator by ASCL India. Wow. I'd like to hear more about that. So maybe we can yes. start off with that and you can then uh, take it away, Harshita. Yeah. Harshita Kapoor. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm. um, so good morning, everyone from India. And uh, here we are in the best of EVO 2020. Um, this is the second year that um, I have offered this course and this session rather. And um, it was um, a success as in most of the participants were able to get through. Uh, with the tasks and complete the session. So it was a great learning with every participant. Each and every participant contributed to the session. So a big thanks to all the participants, basically. So what I do is um, I am the founder of CodeWiz Academy, where I teach about coding. And um, so it's basically about teaching coding to beginners. Some, um, somebody who is a non-IT person, a novice in using technology. So that is where uh, there has to be a bridge. When you are using technology in your everyday work, everyday life, and uh, you need to know the basics of how things work. And that is my uh, motto, that I want to empower everybody who is uh, using technology to actually work more effectively and efficiently. Now, um, talking about cyber crime investigation, that was a certification that I did. And um, that gave me an insight into basically the networking part and the various laws and policies that govern the working of um, the internet, the data that floats, 
that was slightly technical, but overall it was about maintaining the security. And when you know how a hacker thinks, when you know how uh, somebody with a malified intention would try to intrude into your privacy, then is when you get equipped to secure yourself. So that was majorly what it was. Uh, what are the essentials that you need to keep in mind as an end user? Um, as you surf through the internet, as you use uh, various uh, platforms over the internet, and also offline, there are a host of vulnerabilities that float um, in the world. It could be online, it could be offline. Whether you are downloading something from the internet or you are just using a pen drive that you purchased from a market. So there could be um, any source uh, through which there could be an infection floating around. So that is what uh, I learned about there. And uh, yes, so through that, I was able to actually conduct uh, various seminars for um, young learners, for uh, school students, how parents and teachers need to be aware of their children, where they are, how they are. So uh, what all platforms they are using, because there is an aspect of cyberbullying which really haunts everybody today um what and again there is a there is an aspect of child psychology what a child is going through when um they are online there are various emotional conflicts that a child goes through so there are a lot of um, issues that we as teachers need to address there has to be a bridge between you and your young learners. As a parent, as a teacher, you have to be available so that your children can confide into you. That's one very important aspect in today's uh, social media life, the virtual world that we live in. So. Yeah, I, I just put a, I don't know, are you familiar with Darknet Diaries? It's a very interesting. Dark Darknet Diaries. Yeah, it's, uh, I find it quite fascinating. It's a podcast and it's uh, uh, by someone who's into hacking himself and he interviews a lot of other hackers and uh, it's, you get so informed when you listen to this because it, he, they talk about well, all the common tricks and the different people who do it for living uh, in the security side of things. But Anyway, it's, just, it's quite an, an interesting uh, podcast. Uh, you probably would enjoy it. Um, sure. Yeah. Are, are you going to share us, do a screen share or anything like that with us? So it was, if I could also pull up your... Um, yeah, I will, yeah, I will just share. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you, you're, you're teaching uh, HTML in your EVO session? Yes, I was um, teaching in the EVO session. Um, I was uh, teaching about coding. Um, mm -hmm. So that was HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as well. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we only had HTML and CSS. This year, I introduced JavaScript because I wanted to also introduce uh, programming fundamentals. And... Um, so here it is, the EVO session that we had. Um, I believe uh, skilling is different from imparting knowledge and each and every session in EVO, I feel is um, mostly about skilling. That is uh, sharing what can be implemented in real life empowering the teachers and um, what, what 
exactly they can use with their learners. So that is all about the EVO sessions that I personally feel. My objective of having this session was to um, help non-IT teachers become more independent in managing their website and they should have an intellectual property of their own in the form of a website. Um, when they own a domain name, that is, some, that is a place where they can share knowledge and go beyond the boundaries. There are no limitations when um, there, are not, there are no geographical limitations when it comes to teaching online. So how well um, you make use of the online world for teaching and reaching out to your prospective learners. There are uh, people who want to learn and how well you reach out to them, it's all about that. So the course objective was to share the working knowledge of internet um, only owning a domain name, administer and manage a WordPress website, add, modify content of various types on the website, uh, maintain the website security, which is very important. Uh, then was about the basic coding in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, then we talked about understanding the programming fundamentals. For this, we used JavaScript and um, teachers were able to create a web page through code that was um, the code in HTML and CSS. And finally, there was a quiz that the teachers created um, in JavaScript, which is a great, um, work. I mean, somebody who is absolutely um, not from an IT background and within five weeks, if you're able to create an online quiz in JavaScript, it was a great uh, sense of achievement for me because um, uh, it, and it went very smoothly. So I think the participants were really great. So the prospective learners for this course were teachers who are already teaching online and teachers who want to teach online. So we started off with the introduction. Here we had a survey, the introductory survey. And um, in this survey, my uh, in sole intention was to understand the background that the teachers were coming from the technology background how elaborately they use technology in classroom teaching and uh, what is it that they are wanting to learn in technology because it's an ocean of, um, of op opportunities and options that you have. So what exactly does a teacher want or look forward to when they talk of uh, teaching online so just to get an understanding where they're coming from, uh, I had this survey. So in week one, we talked about working of the internet and um, that is basically important, not only because you are uh, going to be working as a website owner and administrator, but also as an end user, when you know exactly what is going on behind the scenes that helps you understand when you're working, it helps you become more precautionate of how things are working in the background. And then we talked about the IP address, TLDN subdomains, the top level domain and a subdomain. Now these would sound like technical jargons and what does somebody need to do with it? When, oh, is it mandatory to get into technicalities of um, the website of the um, different uh, technol uh, technical jargons that we talk about? So I believe uh, you need to know 
what is an IP address? How is it related to a domain name? What is a TLD top level domain? And what is a subdomain? So you, when you look at a link, whenever you surf the internet, you look at a link, you get an understanding what is a subdomain versus what is a subfolder and uh, what is a root domain so that you know what is the difference between hosting a website as a subdomain or as a primary domain that you would own. Then we talked about the protocols. Uh, what are the various protocols used for the transfer of data over the internet? That is HTTP versus HTTPS. And um, other protocols as well that are used. Um, then was about the WordPress.com server and a self-hosted server. So we worked with the free plan on WordPress.com. And um, because this was about starting off, this was about beginning to have your own website and getting accustomed with the dashboard, with the administration of a website. So for that purpose, we worked, started off with the free plan. And um, uh, that is the website that is hosted on the WordPress.com server. And the domain name that you get is also under the free plan or as a free domain, it is a subdomain of wordpress.com. It is not a root domain that you would get. So that is where the entire understanding comes in. In week two, we talked about the introduction to database. So what is a database? Um, without getting into a lot of details, it was basically an understanding um, the misconception that a database would be required only when you have learners on your website. So if you are sharing knowledge, that is if you're writing articles and sharing um, your blog posts, then you do not need a database. That was the misconception because a database is required right from the beginning, right from the time when you host your website. So a database is not only the data about your users, but also the data of the website. That is the data that is on the website, the media and the content that you upload. Then was the introduction to WordPress dashboard through which you manage and administer the website, setting up theme, um, that is the layout of your website, understanding what is a plugin. We could not use the plugin because under the free plan, uh, there is a limitation, you cannot add plugins, but yes, tomorrow if you want to upgrade to a paid plan, so what is a plugin and how would it enhance the working of your uh, website? Then was about adding the content, various types of content that we added and the website security. What is GDPR? What are the various uh, policies and uh, regulations that, you, that the website needs to be compliant of? What are cookies? Now, um, cookies are small uh, programs, chunks of code that are stored on your system. What are the different types of cookies? Now, as an end user also, when you would be surfing a website, you would come across a notification that the website uses cookies. And you have to accept that um, before you can continue surfing or using the website. Why is that so? What is it that is being stored on your system that it is mandatory to give your consent to the website that yes, they can store cookies on your system. So we looked into all those aspects and then, um, and yes, one more thing was about website security was that what kind of data do you store on your system, on your website? That has to be absolutely transparent. What data are you storing? Who are you sharing it with? 
what is the purpose of storing the data you have to make the end user aware absolutely transparently uh, of the uh, of the entire working of your website what is the sole intention of sh uh, saving data so um, that is one very important aspect then also about um, malware detection and spamming which is quite common when you have a website you have to be sure that you curtail spamming and access to any malified person what are the various security precautions that you can take then in week three we looked at the coding languages of the internet what are the various uh, languages indeed there are a host of languages available used for coding for the internet but we looked into html and css a uh, hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets using which uh, within a week's time teachers were able to create their first web page so initially it could sound a little da daunting because you know you do not come from an I, uh, it background or this is not your core subject but uh, once they learned and um, they got through I think everybody enjoyed it and um, that that was a sense of achievement that everybody gets you know when you sail through um, a, a, a task and you achieve it at the end in week four we looked into um, programming fundamentals that is storage conditional constructs looping and various operators that are used um which is uh, spread over two weeks week four and week five and here we introduced javascript displaying a message through javascript on a web page what is the difference between a static website that is designed through html and an interactive website which would have aspects of javascript and uh, how do you add a uh, user interaction on your website so that was through javascript which was also um, done through writing a program for a quiz and so here it was the survey the survey uh, we had close to 48 uh, participants in the session and um, most of them came with more than 10 years of experience and uh, they used technology in a minimalistic manner in uh, most of them used it in a minimalistic manner and then um almost 72 percent of them thought that if they knew technology they would get along better with their learners because we know that today's learners are netizens. They are born with technology. So, and maybe they are well worst, better worst than us in technology. So uh, one thing more that I realized was how to not be scared of um, the modern day learner who is uh, uh, better equipped with technology uh, is to make them participant in the entire teaching and learning process. So uh, we cannot go along with the conventional kind of working and teaching. As teachers, we need to involve them more into the process and how well we involve them, the more effective your teaching would be. It cannot go on as a monotone and uh, yes so most of them uh, wanted to almost all of them wanted to enhance their technology skills and maybe a few felt that they would invest their time and effort only if they knew what this technology would help them with because i understand teachers have a lot in the on their platter and uh, it is wise 
that you know how well that specific technology would help them in teaching. Only then they would want to invest their time and effort into it. And uh, what areas uh, would you like to be well equipped with? So that was about learning management system, coding, um, using various technology for making um, quality content. And uh, basically there were uh, other responses uh, related to learning coding and creating apps. And I absolutely agree because when you are working as a teacher, you know it best. What is it that you want? What are your requirements? And if you are equipped to create apps by yourself, then that is going to help you in your everyday working, of course. And then every week we had um, a lesson plan which was written uh, for the beginner level users. Then we had live sessions, two live sessions per week. There were presentation resources on SlideShare. There was a discussion forum every week where we did collaborative learning. We shared the different views uh, that uh, all the participants had about the various technological um, concepts that we were talking about in the respective week. And then there were external links for supplementary reading if somebody wants to get deeper into the entire uh, topic. And there were batches every week for successfully completing the task. And at the end, there was a certificate of completion, of course. These were the platforms that were used. The uh, course was hosted on moodleforteachers.org. Thanks to Dr. Nelly for that. And um, not just that, I have to thank her for a lot of things. Um, and then was the Facebook group. Um, where uh, was it was a secondary platform to connect a slide share and a YouTube uh, channel where we had um, a playlist for all the tutorials and the live session recordings that we had. So the understanding by the end of the session was that to have an online presence, you need to have a website and a blog. Uh, because that would be a place where your learners can be redirected to whenever they want to reach out to you, they want to um, see what you are working on. And it is an easy platform for you to curate the entire work that you have, be it on different platforms, but you can just have one place where you can curate all of your work. And having more than one online platform is always handy. Um, which is why we had a Facebook group, which is a private group. Um, then uh, coding basics are helpful. It could be a slight learning curve, but it is achievable and rewarding. So as per the participants response, the course was helpful and the layout was friendly. So um, they wanted to learn more and they found it to be beneficial. They wanted uh, that it should have uh, different levels so that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, they can continue to learn uh, further. That was uh, one of the feedbacks. And I really want to thank Dr. Neri because she's my mentor and she has given me ample opportunities to share um, my little knowledge with everyone and supported me all throughout. And thanks to Vance and Jane who have uh, very uh, swiftly and smoothly helped and supported me uh, for getting through this and uh, managed everything so wonderfully. And to the entire EVO team because it's a group of fantastic teachers and 
I really feel privileged to be amongst them. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. The thanks go to you because uh, you, everybody in EVO does all this work and, uh, and it's, you know, we're more than a sum of our parts. So, um, thank you. Yeah. So anyway, well, that's, a, I, I've always been interested in your course and I hope I get to take it one time. Actually, with Jane and I were chatting, uh, I, I thought it would be kind of fun to get you onto learning together, uh, to talk about your work sometime. Maybe I'll just do a quick share here. You were asking me about it earlier. Uh, when we were talking, oh, by the way, it just happens to be the first thing that comes up is the Darknet Diaries. This is a podcast where you can learn a lot about hacking if you're interested in that. But the reason uh, I came here was for learning together. And I'm just popping over to that site. I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. Um, this is learning together. Um, oh, this is... Um, Oh my goodness, this is uh, something I haven't saved yet. <laughs> hmm, okay, let me just go to it in some other way because, okay, sorry about that. I'll go have to and check later if I should save that or if I just had it open somewhere else. I'm getting pretty busy in my multitasking. Okay, so anyway, uh, Learning Together is at learningtogether.pbworks.com. And it's also at learningtogether.net. And there are links in and out of all these places. And to get a full program of our upcoming events, there's a link there. But there's also a, uh, a tiny URL for it. So the tiny URL is tinyurl.com slash learningtogether. And that shows you what's coming up. So for example, um, this is what we're doing now. And there's also a link here to its archive, which I've put up. Uh, basically, let's see, if you go, if I pop up to the top of this page, a table of contents, you're asking me what's the difference between Google Docs and um, uh, PB Works. PB Works is the nice thing is the, uh, the sidebar, which you can have a lot of information fronted there. Of course, in Google Docs, you can get a table of contents. You can do that in PB Works as well. So. Anyway, basically you can see what's coming up at Learning Together. So anybody who is presenting here in the best of EVO uh, would be more than welcome to, uh, to do a presentation. There's, there's something uh, I've started called Talon. Uh, I might have to show it to you later because it's not just handy right here, but Talon is teaching and learning in isolation. And it's something that a few of us have, uh, or maybe I will, uh, I'll just, I'll try it. Let's see if I go to. Oh, here, here by the way, is the uh, recording from last night. Now, that's this. These are all being recorded. I'll just show you. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's probably going to be best if I go over here and get it from my recent um, files. These are a little slow right now. Talon, where is Talon? Teaching and learning online. Um, I don't see it there, so I'll put it here. Okay. That's it. So this is something else that everybody would be more than welcome to join us in. It's just something we just started, this isolation having come on us quite suddenly. So actually we started it just at the end of last month. But as here's a Google Doc, which also has a table of contents. And tomorrow we have, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, uh, Michael Coughlin and Barbara Dew and some of their people are meeting. We're going to do this every Monday, but if you want to uh, to join us, you can just go to that link, Talon2020. I couldn't get Talon. Talon was uh, taken. So uh, tinyurl.com slash Talon2020. If you go there, then you can uh, join, request access. Uh, there's an explanation of that here. Why I, I like to, I don't like to leave things open to just anybody to edit because you can't go back. They're not credentialed and you can't go back and change things in case you have to. So I ask people to join, but when you join, you can just write yourself in anywhere here and then we uh, archive it. I'll host it as long as you can do it between in my waking hours, which are about 2 a.m. UTC to up to 1400 UTC. That's 10 in the morning here to mid 
to midnight. If you go, to, uh, well, uh, 14, uh, 16, uh, 1400 is 10 o'clock at night, but that would, we'd end at uh, 11 o'clock. So anyway, if you want to, it to be in there, I'll host it for you, as long as we're still in isolation. So I'm not going anywhere else, looking for things to do. So um, let's see, uh, Jane, Jane had some questions. Uh, she had a couple of questions. Do you want to ask her oh, okay. your questions? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, I think my first, well, I like to learn how to create a quiz in JavaScript and we'll do that sometime. Um, um, this other question <clears throat> um, is about like, um, how does the university block us from playing multiplayer games? Because I was trying to go on a Minecraft multiplayer server and uh, it, the university just does not allow us to do that. Is, is that for security issues? Uh, for having multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yes, that could be a reason because the, um, when we talk about multiplayer games, then you need to give access to the server. Mm -hmm. And um, um, there could be networking issues. There could be um, uh, uh, networking issues as in when uh, students collaborate because they have to be connected together for a multiplayer game. And um, there can be intrusion into the network. Probably that could be one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure why, uh, what would be the exact reason for not having okay. that allowed. Um, I'm, I think I need to go through like a, an official like uh, application process to get it to work. So I'm gonna do yes, that. maybe Find time to because you will have to give access to the network. Uh huh. Okay. And you also were wondering about cookies. Oh yeah. So so why cookies? <laughs> okay. And yeah, and are they safe? To, are are we safe if we clicked accept? Uh, so exactly, that is the point, because this came in as a mandatory rule after GDPR was implemented. And uh, what happens is there are two types of cookies that we have, uh, session cookies and permanent cookies. So session cookies, what are cookies? Basically, uh, cookies are certain uh, software which are saved onto your system, which store uh, your data when you are surfing the website. So. What session cookies does is they store your username and password so that while you are surfing on that website, that becomes a seamless um, experience. Uh, as you are surfing, even if you get disconnected and you get reconnected within a few seconds, your username and password still is there on your system and still you are logged in. Uh, while there was a dropout of because probably because of the network issue or something. And uh, so that is what the session cookie is all about. Uh, when Once you uh, close the session, that is when once you close the tab or the browser window, the session cookie is deleted from your system. So that is um, nothing to worry about. The main part is the other kind of um, cookies that you have, which are uh, persistent cookies, which are stored on your system. And what happens is while you are surfing a website, now the website owner wants to store data about your surfing pattern. For example, where all did you click on the website? Mm -hmm. How much time have you spent on a specific part of the website? All those aspects need to be stored so that the website can um, cater to your requirement. For example, you go on to an e-commerce website and uh, you are shopping for a specific article. Now you have spent some time on um, searching for a specific category and specific item and then a specific product. 
so all this data is stored in that persistent cookie now next time when you log into that website um they will somehow show you an offer or reflect that specific item or as a pop up or on the top of the list that this is what you served about in the previous session that is where these could be misused for remarketing purposes and uh, this is basically used for displaying ads now suppose you have visited a number of websites for traveling and you are planning to travel to india what then you would probably see adwords on whichever website is adword enabled uh you would see adwords related to traveling to india various packages that are being offered on various websites and stuff like that so that is all done through these persistent cookies a lot of data about your surfing pattern is being stored that also includes a a kind of personally identifiable data that is your ip address the sessions um so that is uh, the the ip address and the sessions that are you uh, that are uh, being saved that can be manipulated so that is why you have to be careful which website do you accept to have um your um or to have cookies saved from uh exactly so when we talk about an lms such as moodle they have a uh, cookies enabled wherein they track your login time and your log the session that you uh, were logged in for the duration that you were logged in for now when a learner enters the website they are working on the website where all they were surfing all that is used through cookies and then saved on as logs your surfing logs and then as a a teacher or an instructor you can go into those logs check the learning pattern of your learners and give them a personalized learning according to their requirement because once you understand that there is a task properly for example that you have given them and they have spent n number of hours on that specific task yet they have not been able to complete it that means they require some hand holding and that is how you can understand their learning pattern what specific topic needs more attention and um more of support from your end maybe so yes so that can help in understanding learning pattern you're right thank you thank wow. you yeah we got quite a lot of information there we really appreciate that that was a yeah. a, a wonderful uh, explanation i've never heard anybody explain cookies in that way <laughs> i like the chocolate chip ones frank uh, personally <laughs> okay so well hashita thank you very much uh thank rosemary you. was here just a moment ago she's still in the chat uh so maybe we can get her to come on she's going to there she is hi rosemary how are you you need to unmute yourself uh you have to unmute yourself there's a oh, maybe i can do it for you no you have to do it yourself you have to find the microphone icon and yeah, there you I go yeah i forgot i was muted yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay uh good evening everyone mm -hmm. i'm here not as a moderator but as a learner of the fantastic uh session led by dr nelly Dios, I never know how to say her last name. <laughs> mm -hmm. How to pronounce it? Uh, I call her Super Nelly because she does everything at the same time in such a great way. She's just marvelous. So, um, as a student, I can. Uh, Rosemary, can you tell us who you are and what your uh, oh, sorry. what your connection is to the EVO? 
Yes, I um, I discovered EVO um, in 2013 when I was uh, granted, you know, a free <laughs> a free trip to the diesel convention, but I couldn't uh, go because they wouldn't give me a visa. <laughs> mm. So I stayed and I tried my best to participate and I found Evo. Oh my God, I signed up for so many courses and that was such a mistake, of course, <laughs> from the learner's point of view. And uh, the next year, I didn't finish any of them. The, ne the, the following year, I not only took two courses, but I moderated one. I did the uh, ebook, crafting ebooks with Shelly and um, yeah, teachers as designers. With that was a cool UD. course. That was in uh, Google Plus communities, was it? Yes, and, and it was, was, yeah. Uh -huh. when that was, that the first was time that, was here. <laughs> yeah that introduced me to google plus communities that that, that was a cool course it was awesome mm -hmm. because i not only became a writer because i'm an overachiever i finished an ebook actually not just the first chapter as they uh, pretended and uh, i was moderating that session as well the evil ebook and it was a treasure you know for my professional development and um, for my networking professional networking mm -hmm. so I had to help and um, I tried <laughs> oh I helped Nelly also um, the first year on a uh, International Writing Exchange. That was my first experience as a moderator, then with Shelly. And um, I'm dying to, I, I took Harshita's curse as well. Is, is it about a teacherpreneur, something like that? Yeah, becoming a teacherpreneur, coding, basically coding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did not finish it because I didn't understand coding very well. <laughs> and I had um, one more session that I was moderating. So that's my experience with Evo and I am honored to be here presenting as a learner because this year I was not able to fulfill my duties as a moderator with Super Shelly. And Super of Nelly. Course, yes. <laughs> also Sorry, Super I'm, Shelly. I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, as we all know, Shelly is super productive, of course. And uh, let me first give you a link, okay? And um, she does her best. And this year, she offered tools for student collaboration. I guess Nelly is a bit of a future visionary because that is just what we were going to need in these times of crisis. So I, I took that uh, session and as a good student, I want to show that I can apply and use uh, the very final tool that she uh, instructed us in. The first one was VoiceThread. The second one was the uh, Google Docs and um, Google Forms and Google Slides. And the final one was Pad Padlet. And I believe that I fell in love. I, I had used Padlet before, but never, ever at this level. So 
months since I fell in love, re fell in love maybe, with Padlet, I just went ahead and decided to present about it. So here is if you have a QR reader or I will just give you the, well, my controls, okay. Sorry. How was it? Um, Alt H. Yeah, I learned uh, shortcuts for <laughs> Zoom. So I will share with you a link to a Padlet that I made for this presentation. You could please go to this address and we will start collaborating. As soon as you get in, you can say hi. It's going to be reflected here. Okay, let's copy the link. Uh, let's see. Did I? I can Did it. I? <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know, no, uh, it just doesn't link. They don't link automatically. You have to copy it and then paste it. Ah. Use the camera Ooh. on your Why? phone. Why? I did that, but it didn't, it took a while. Let's see. Actually, okay. I, I have a shorter, right. a shorter, right. shortened version here. Okay. No, I couldn't. I couldn't get it from my camera on my phone. It's uh, still mine. Is still. You cannot uh, scan uh, that one uh, because the, that's the link. Yeah, and now I'm trying to find a browser <laughs> in all the windows I've got open here. You know, actually, I think if I, I know. Do it, yeah, yeah. I have the same problem here. What can I do? Let's see. It's moving um, very slowly. Like the. It's okay, I will just shorten it once again. And that's what I will share, okay? That's TTVNHR2, okay? I can get Yeah, that that's, that's it. Okay. Uh, if you can copy and paste that into Yes, chat. I will. Thank you. Nice, sorry. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that'll make it a little easier. There you go. Okay, so Yay. it's T T V N H R two. I'm sorry. Did you have enough time? Well, it is. Yep. Oh, yep. we're in. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are great. So just say hi. Okay. So we know. Do we need to log in? No, nothing. It's open. It's public. It's open. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just start another one. Uh, oh, yes. Right here. You, you, okay. you uh, click on the plus. Hi. And how do we yes. do our name there? This oh. is Jane. Just add something to the board. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I've got, I've started something, but I can't seem to get it to add. And add how do I? Just write it and that's it. Yay. Okay. All right. Ah, Vince, you're here. Jane mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's it. Very good. Just, uh, click here and that's it. Oh, I, I forgot to do, I'm uh, here. I forgot to do something. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, where are the controls? Here. Michael got through to a YouTube yes, video. I you guys can to talk to us. Go you're, you're, with that spotlight. If anybody wants to take a mic, you're welcome my to speak. spotlight, mm -hmm. okay? What so did you, there we go. What did you so find on YouTube? Did you? Ah, uh, here you are. Good. I am just going to go ahead and change that so it shows your comments first, okay? So, 
as you can see, I was not able to see your comments. But if I go here and I do that, that's it. New post position, there you go. All right. Now, next time you post something, it's going to come up there. Haha, <laughs> Vince, Jane, Jimmy, and Carol. Perfect. So you are all here. As uh, the coronavirus has us locked in lockdown, um, we need to teach from home. And that was a new experience for most of my peers, former peers, and they were about to lose it. We, of course, love technology and we are evil <laughs> people. And uh, I don't think you are facing any challenges. I thought we were gonna have students here, but we are going to start, okay? What do you think is challenging about remote teaching for those teachers who are not techies? <laughs> like um, us, what do you think? So I would please ask you to go to Google Images and look, don't say it, just look for a picture that portrays one challenge and post it on the board. So that's your task. Oh, there's a... Oh. Yeah, there is a task. This is pic we are picture, collaborating. We pic are picture I, I or pic picture um, or YouTube video. Can I post YouTube? No, video? just picture. Just picture that portrays okay. one challenge, just one, like a word, like I don't know, mm -hmm. URLs. <laughs> uh, one challenge. Internet, uh, whatever. I don't know what challenges do you think the uh, teachers who who have never uh, taught in line what challenges do you think they face and um, whenever you're ready I am waiting for your pictures just pictures um. Just go, like, go, ahead, go to Google and Google a picture. Uh, okay. Perhaps. What kind of challenge? Post it on the board, please. And the board. Do we post, we copy the picture or we post this link or? Just click on plus and you uh -huh. will, it's so oh. intuitive uh -huh. that you can add get lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. Insert a file. Just, uh, well, you will find it. I'm pretty sure. Please. Oh. oh, that's the challenge. Playing the guitar. No, no, no. that's not a that, challenge. That's that's him singing about being having to teach everything on Zoom and Yes, that that's uh, uh just a picture, please. Okay. You know, since um, I learned about peer working and uh, collaborative working, so that's what I'm trying to... Oh, you mean 
So Cha challenges of teaching online? Yes, just one. What challenge do you think teachers? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to say anything. Love it. And then I will give you the next instruction. Rosemary, can you see mine from Carol? Yeah. Is, is, is this one yours? No. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that one. Ah. <laughs> oh, know. my God. Yes. Okay. I just want to show you <laughs> what I got, you know, just for it. This <laughs> presentation, I knew someone was going to post a picture like that. But this one has it's cooler. Okay, awesome. Do you all have pictures? Okay, I only have one and two. Okay, to make things shorter, we are going to work with those two. Okay. Those who didn't post a picture, don't worry, okay? You are going to guess what the challenge is. Ah, here we go. Uh, no, <laughs> picture about one challenge. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was the instruction, yes. Um, okay. What is challenge? Look for a picture that portrays one challenge right that was the instruction <laughs> I know see now you are uh, noticing what challenges your students might face when you teach them online and that course made me realize that they might be native digital natives, but about edu educational technology, they know nothing. So it is even hard for us teachers. So what was my mistake here? I should have asked one of you to read the instructions for me, right? And I should have asked a second student to paraphrase that and or maybe CCQ, uh, comprehension checking questions, okay? And you can do it all here. Okay, there we go. Uh, no <laughs> picture. Okay, good. We're, we're gonna work with what we have. Don't worry about it, okay? Good, so we have two pictures. We have this one, okay, from Michael. And please go ahead and comment about the challenge you think he is trying or he is trying to portray with this picture. Michael, don't say anything, please. Everybody else, everybody, everyone else should do that, okay? Uh, okay. Frustration. Um, you have to, the teacher, you have the to teacher is blind. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. We have to Sorry. write. Okay, I'm just gonna have. Remember, this is about teachers. What challenges teachers face? It doesn't matter. That picture is perfect. So, from a teacher's point of view. Comment on the picture, okay. I know um, Michael was trying to portray students and not teachers, but anyways. Well, it, it's odd actually, because I did Google for an image of a teacher. Don't worry, I, I know, okay. It, it's yes, okay. Don't worry about it. What about that? 
teachers believe that teaching online is not complete because there is no human interaction. But I believe exactly the opposite. I think that that is the most human way of teaching because as you look at the camera, each and every student are going to feel and perceive that you are speaking straight to them and just them. So that is going to make them feel great, uh, better than in a classroom in which you cannot look at the same time, okay, to all your students. It's humanly impossible. So this is a, the most human way of teaching that I know. Then um, students are in their environment. You know, they are relaxed, no stress, and that means those neurons are ready and ready for, you know, uh, synapses. <laughs> and uh, they love being online. At home, online, what could be better? So that's a natural way of teaching, as I understand it. Uh, maybe you disagree, as many of European teachers who were taking this uh, course, hmm, what was it? Ah, the British Council. Oh my God, 144 comments. Two of them were positive. I hate it, I don't like it, no human contact. No, 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 this and that and that. So maybe we need to expand Evo's uh, frontiers next year to take in as many uh, European teachers as we can. Right? There you go. And Michael, I know, please tell me, what were you trying to portray? Oh, as yes. you understand. The, the search that I went for was actually frustrated online teacher. Uh, and then the image came up and I quite like Frustrated it. online teacher, perfect. The, the image of the student came up and I thought, well, I quite like this. No, one. no, no. Um, it's perfect. You know, we are oh, just like kids. The, the students, potentially, as people transition, that they receive you know, are... messages from so many people and... Uh, so perhaps just too much for him. <laughs> I love your image because it portrays teachers as some as a kid. I would I would change that for a baby, you know, trying to walk for the first time, and uh, that's challenging. It is frustrating, but you really want to do it because. That's why we are teachers. It's not because of the money. We all know that. <laughs> but it is because we need, we have to get our students to learn, to change, okay? And uh, if we don't do that, we get frustrated. Okay? So, up to now, have you learned what to do first when it comes to teaching online using Padlet? Yes. Great. So this was not taught uh, on the course, but of course, um, you know, situations make us uh, I know. Uh, be creative. And I believe that this is a great way of teaching online using a combination of Padlet, 
zoom or something alike. Okay, and they're both free. Rosemary, I have a question. Sure. So is Padlock blocked in China? I have to use WeChat. I was using Zoom, but Zoom is blocked in China now. Oh, it is? Wow. Ah, it doesn't, uh, well, Zoom has recently um, offered the platform, okay, the, the software for free to institutions. So if you work at an institution, just uh, ask one of your managers to send a request and all the teachers in your institution will have access to the full uh, prize uh, Zoom version. By the way, that happened like a week ago, huh? Oh, okay. No, I'm an independent uh, private teacher. You're a private teacher? Yeah. No, you can't. I had to, well, it was on sale for one day. Okay. Uh, yes, half price. It was, I, I paid seven, uh, seven dollars for a month. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I, I might be able to forward you uh the email with the code maybe you can still apply it. huh uh, i don't remember you, what which was it okay you, you said that so, padlet, padlet is free now it's being offered for free uh they, they are offering uh the full version of zoom that oh, work zoom. for free zoom. To ah, zoom. no padlet, padlet is free you okay. have the paid version of course, but the free one is the one I'm using now. But with the free one, you only get one Padlet. You get four now. <laughs> oh, okay, well. Yes, it has changed a lot. You have no uh -huh. idea. <laughs> I see, okay. Well, I was using it uh, in January, February, and I only got one, but, um, but maybe you they You can create it up to four. Here okay. is my dashboard, see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you can see it, there you go. Mm -hmm. I still have room for one more. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and, and you can delete them, of course. And oh, of by course. the way, when when you delete them, if you want to preserve them, you can save them as PDF files or as images. Yes, you can. So definitely, you can, if you're not and using it, you can preserve. You can have a, a an image. Yes, and here you have okay a full fully loaded YouTube playlist to Padlet and uh, also Zoom. And mm -hmm. it is here. It's on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I would like to minimize this. Good. There you go. Of course, I have tools and uh, Nelly's course, Zoom apps, Google Slides, Padlet, tech tips for students, for you, you have to do nothing, right? It, only if you can do better than these uh, tutorials, then produce content. Otherwise, uh, spend your time thinking about how is that you are going to engage those kids so that they look forward to get in contact with you again, to see you again, to have classes again. And um, well, I hope they fall in love with it. And uh, we have no other option, <laughs> okay? But to teach online. There you go, you have a lot. And I will actually open the playlist so you can add any other interesting videos that you might find. Okay. And are so. these are these links in your um, uh, in your uh, template in the? In uh, the it's here. Uh -huh. If you sorry, if you scroll up, uh -huh. you will see. There you go. It's right here. Here in the chat. Scan okay. it or YouTube playlist. 
Okay. The the chat logs will be uh, they are of course. being recorded and they Why will be, not? they're online. So uh, yes, we have course. all those links there. Uh -huh. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll probably get around to that this afternoon because it's coming on eleven. It's just eleven o'clock where I am right now in the morning, and Jane too. So there you go, guys. Yeah. Done. Okay. Did you know how to bring up the chat with shortcuts? The chat with what? Shortcut keyboard. Oh, shortcuts. shortcuts. Which uh -huh. chat? You Which just chat? press Alt H, and there you go. Alt H, and what are Alt you talking about H. in Zoom or what? Zoom. Oh, in Zoom. And then, of course, if when you need to mute everyone, Alt M, and just you, or oh, when there is a and an annoying or I don't know distracting, you know, background noise, and to unmute the same. Alt M, and then you are all unmuted. Mm -hmm. What about that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Huh? Uh, well, I don't like to, I, I, I appreciate people muting themselves when other people are talking, but of course, in, in when I'm doing a Zoom meeting, I, I don't mute. I, 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 I open the meeting so that anybody can come, when they come in, everyone is muted and their videos are off, but they can turn them on. So I like to have conversations in our... Yes. Yeah. It's because of the kind of meetings that you lead. Mm -hmm. But what about a teacher who oh, has so, 40 mm -hmm. chatty students? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's my purpose here. Mm -hmm. To... Yeah, and here, here again, that depends on your teaching style. I'm, I'm sort of a chaotic person. Uh, so I, I, I like chaos. Uh, I, I think people learn through chaos. Um, Good chaos. <laughs> if, whereas if you're too controlling, uh, you can yeah, learning, cut the chaos, learning but you also... Is chaotic, okay? Yes, uh-huh. It is. So the more chaos, uh, that you can produce, and that's the good one, the produced chaos, not the one they want to do, <laughs> but the one you uh, make happen. Maybe you are talking about that, Dennis. Um, well, I'm thinking about what George Stevens says uh, uh, about chaos. He, uh, he thinks, he, he likes, in why he set up MOOCs uh, that uh, a chaos is necessary for learning, and if uh, when he and, and MOOCs are chaotic, and he's he says he's found no no research that suggests that it isn't good for learning. Uh, but of course, you have to have control over an environment, especially like you say, it depends on who you're teaching. Uh, I think MOOCs are are well well uh, adapted to people who are good learners and if you have people who aren't good learners and you're being paid to uh, get them to produce something on an exam well that's a, a slightly different situation maybe you don't want so much chaos i've encountered a lot of teachers like that who try to reduce the chaos and i wouldn't say that i learned a lot but i certainly did learn to answer the questions on their exams chaos is the best thing you can produce Mm -hmm. in your classes, of mm -hmm. course, especially when teaching a second language, mm -hmm. because that's when they will have to negotiate meaning mm -hmm. yes, and are. start mm -hmm. producing, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. definitely, but not the chaos that students want to produce in our classes, like chatting with a, with a friend or you know, mm, I don't know, making uh, noises like, ah, nah, things like that, mm -hmm. or just standing up whenever they, they want and interrupting you or interrupting classmates or making fun. Well, that's the different chaos. Now, that's why I said, um, I mentioned 
your produced chaos is the best chaos that uh, could happen to education, especially in, in ESL, right? So uh, imagine you are using Zoom and of course the students are at home. They are comfortable. Maybe their mother is there and forgot he or she is actually learning and she gels. <laughs> like, Michael, come here. Dinner is ready or something. Like Lunch is ready. You don't want to hear that. So that's why I, um, I taught you about the shortcut, the keyboard shortcut, alt N to mute everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. When you have something important to say, like instructions. And then alt M to unmute them. Okay. okay. They will That be... actually works. You can unmute them as well. Shall I try the it same. now? Yes. Mute and unmute. Alt okay. M. Let me try. Of course. Excuse some chaos. Okay. Alt M. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosemary is still unmuted. That didn't work. Alt, oh, Alt yeah, M. Yeah, it's because Alt. I'm, I'm using my key. Ah, I got it. Alt M. Yeah, that, that worked. Alt. Bravo, Vance. Okay. And Alt do you M. know Alt. where is that you can actually, okay. Yeah. Do you know where is that you can find all those shortcuts? Right here. Another okay. link goes in the chat. And no, here, see? Mm -hmm. Settings and keyboard shortcuts. Ah, mm -hmm. You activate as many as you want. Mm -hmm. Switch to speaker view, gallery view. I, I have some of them. Yeah. Start and stop screen sharing, start and stop uh, recording. Huh? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Cool. Yes. Nice to know where to find these things. We need to be curious. That's the best, the best thing. <laughs> you need to have a, a need. That's where you really, I mean, they, there's something that came along called Zoom bombing. It's suddenly become a problem and it's starting to go, you know, people are starting to attend to it. So that's how I learned how to have, uh, how to use these, um, the waiting room. So I set up a waiting room here. And it's worked quite well, actually. And uh, I can, if, if there were any problem, I could move people to it. Uh, speaking of a problem, I think that Judy and Cheryl, possibly, I'm not sure, maybe they uh, thought they were uh, presenting at uh, I will just wrap three o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, sure, you can wrap it up. And then actually, I, can, I, I will wrap it up. And yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will wrap I, up. I, after I you wrap it up, that. we'll take questions from people. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. One minute. Let me go ahead and see. Light and clear. Oh, wait. One more picture. Just one more picture. The second one. Okay. <laughs> what is it? That's a video. Yeah, it's down That's there. Pretty cool. I need to refresh. Yeah, I just need to refresh it because uh, I'm in Bolivia. My internet is not <laughs> mm. that reliable. So um, yes, the other one. Ah, remember the one I, I will that looks like this, right? All right. There, that one. So, Carol, now with this picture, we can actually, we can assign it as homework if you want. All right. So, we do the first one during the class, the online class, and we leave the second one for them to write whenever they want, but before the next class. And they will need to rate pictures as well. Here, you can give them, um, excuse me. I, I can see that Carol is talking, but I can't hear anything. So there, there's- um, uh, Carol, 
you need to unmute yourself. No, um, I'm sorry. Unmuted. I was just standing no. by. What was the question? Uh, we huh? can. Well, we. Oh, we see your mic is on, and yeah. uh, we thought you were trying to say something. So no, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for an instruction. Oh. Okay. Yes. Um. You could also have this. So students can, you know, rate. Okay. Pictures or whatever they find. Okay. Like that. There you go, or comments and anything else. So you can assign that as homework and they will not feel it as homework. Right? It's fun, it's interactive, and you can use many other tools. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I would take any questions from, from you right now. Yeah, <laughs> I and, saw that video. And, oh my God. <laughs> it um, was amazing. <laughs> and I mean questions or comments about just anything because uh, whatever, um, whatever you, Harshita said or what you think about EVO, uh, we can take uh, 15 minutes, if you like, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we can uh, talk about anything you want, so. Yeah, um, my, Michael Birch also posted this Israeli mom ranted about online learning. I don't know if you've seen this video. Um, right, it's so funny you have to see it because right now um, because of the lockdown um, teachers are like managing everything online and they have like they print they print out like a whole day schedule like a school schedule and ask we ask their kids to follow that schedule mm. and this mom has four kids and she's like <laughs> ranting like how you know how many like uh, how many uh, messages she she gets every day she has four kids all those messages you know she can't couldn't handle four kids with two laptops and they're fighting for their laptops and one of the music teacher was sending them like the the what what's it called um Sound uh, music, music. Score, score, yes, music mm. score, and she said she, she she doesn't know what to do with that music score. She doesn't teach music, she doesn't know how <laughs> to play, and now she's you know having to deal with everything. And she she was urging the teachers to relax. It's fine. Um, don't give their the kids so many tasks, and she could she just couldn't handle it. So it's not just uh, teachers, who <laughs> you know, very. Like Jane is being fr frustrated um, teaching online, but uh, parents stay at, like parents as well. Jane is being extremely polite. Mm -hmm. This lady says, "Stop it! Stop <gasps> it! I'm going crazy! <laughs> I can't deal with it anymore. You know, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> My kids are not learning. Nobody is okay." And this stress and, and everything. No, you know, it's, it's, it's a video that went viral because most parents feel like that. And uh, that, that is because we were not ready, no? right, for this. Mm -hmm. um, and how about the parents who are still working? Essential yeah. Job? yeah, they're still working at home, but they still have to, um, do, you know, uh, monitor how their kids are doing learning yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah, and my sister, she's in Orlando. Both sisters are in Orlando. They're having Zoom calls like for hours, but you know, with their kids, they have, you know, they they need to um, um, like monitor how her 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 daughter is uh, using laptop all by herself. First graders and one one of. Them, uh, Andrew is um, a kinder in kindergarten, and both of them have to learn online, and everything's on Google Classroom. And she's like, um, "No, I really can't handle work and having to teach right. their."
their right. kids right. It's all not at realistic. once. It's not realistic. Yeah. 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 Actually, it, mm -hmm. they shouldn't have to because it's our job to make sure no, that... She's saying that um, the teachers are pushing it because the teachers are saying, if you don't submit this assignment, then you're not you're not going to have this grade. You need to make you know, make sure it, you need to submit this assignment. Make sure you finish all, the online learning. Otherwise, yeah. you don't you won't have a grade. And so, um, you know, my sister is a tiger mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hope she doesn't. Do I we all. <laughs> and so she's she's really um, yeah. Grades is is, is everything. Yeah. But, um, it's 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 something that the teachers, most teachers, don't get. It's not the same. This is remote teaching, yeah. so that means that if you actually upload, you know, homework, you are trying to do classroom teaching. Yeah, you can't. You can't remote. Yeah, you cannot even get your 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 kids to do homework when they attend your classes, okay? So now you pretend that they all do it because that's the only way to prove that you have taught and that children have learned and that you get paid. So they have the books and uh, I, I have these, uh, okay, I, I worked for an institution. They are uploading, okay, PDF versions of the book. The student has the book, the teacher has the book, and the screen has the book. What's with that? No, 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 no. Why would you do that? Okay, just do something different, something engaging, because they will get distracted they will have a thousand other, you know, um, tabs opened. They will be chatting with their friends, okay? And, um, well, we don't want that. We want to keep them glued. And uh, that, that, uh, could be achieved by using many or all of the tools for student collaboration that uh, Dr. Nelly uh, so geniusly selected for this first version. Uh, they can collaborate by voice, uh, texting, um, by writing, and finally here by using everything. And this yeah. is your back channel, and this is your proof. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Remote teaching is not the same as classroom teaching. So whenever, like, teachers could assign a lot of tasks, but they need to be aware of how many hours, like, or time that their students are going to put into those hours. And also, you, you just can't um, keep kids in front of the camera all the time. So they really need to be aware of, like, uh, if they've assigned – like, for example, um, Padlet, um, post a picture um, and um, comment on somebody else's. Like, so what do you think? How, how much time would the kids need to do this cat task, um, con complete this task? And that all goes into like one lesson. You, you just have to um, be aware of that. Um, so do, do not assign all those tasks in and, and um, wishing that your students can finish that. It's, it's not the same. So Michael, would like you like that? Michael, Michael has something yeah. to say? Yes. Go ahead, Michael. What you're saying that, Jane, imagine as a teacher, if you go through every single entry on a Padlet board mm -hmm. in order to assess it. Yeah. The students to do that as well. So they go through every single entry on the Padlet board for all the other people in their class. And that's, that's not feasible. That would take them forever. Uh, when it comes to assessment. So it needs uh, to be very focused that they need to have a particular. That's the, well, 
Africa. Unfortunately, we have tests, Michael. We still have tests. No, no, but uh, I'm saying students shouldn't be needing to assess the work of all the other students. No, they don't assess. They just rate. Oh, okay, this was a great picture for, okay, the feeling that he was trying to portray, okay? For example, okay, and this was not because it does not show me, right? Like that, ah, uh, no. But, or, no, nah, got yeah. it? And that is not, not grading. No, I'm you saying, are like forcing your students yeah. to collaborate, to analyze, to evaluate all the hacks during your remote teaching. But and, if we're yes, go ahead, Michael. Flipping or blending the students to do a simple creative task outside the classroom and then discuss synchronously. Yes, that than, would be great. Uh, that would be great. Mm -hmm. And evaluate that all their classmates asynchronously. Yes. Well, what about this? All those creative tasks have to be done in class, like here. Look for picture that portrays. Okay, so this is okay. done. In How you're feeling right now, right? And and that is okay. Look for picture, and uh, um, when you post your picture, text me privately the word. I don't know teaching emotions or something like that. Okay, um, or look for a superhero that I don't know or breakout rooms and uh, discuss and pick one. And then you have to, you know, rotate them like jigsaw. And uh, you can do many things. And that's the great thing you are doing during class, doing and when they are away, they have to recall, if you want, with one simple task that is almost the same, but, you know, like um, the Z plus one, uh, a little bit more difficult. And that has to do, uh, has to be done individually because here they are collaborating, here they are um, learning from each other, peer learning, collaborative learning. And uh, that what I think remote teaching is about uh, from everything I learned on this EVO session. Well, what I'm hearing is that, uh, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of ex uh, exploitation here. You know, uh, when I've done, I was doing Padlets with my uh, participants in Thailand and workshops and I was there were live workshops I did about eight or I've got eight or ten padlets something like that and a lot of them are hodgepodges and some of them were not that well let me, let me put it this way if uh, if I did a padlet and I got maybe 20 responses there there uh, Michael's right it's very difficult to evaluate that but you also have to be clear in other words, what I, I think what I'm leading to is that if you were able to exploit one thing from the Padlet for each student, that the student could take and move into a more productive domain where they could either create uh, something multimedia about it or a, a video or a recording or write something about it. If they could, if you used Padlet to seed something like that that you would then evaluate you would then get from each student so uh, it's quite easy to put something on a padlet board and quite easy to rate other people's padlets uh, but to take away some learning something that goes a little higher up the blooms uh pyramid then you but you could do that and it, it, because also i'm hearing that people are not really teachers don't really have time to 
they haven't had time to consider how they're throwing these online tasks onto students. And, you know, obviously they're, they're running up against some reality checks um, that they weren't aware. They're not really aware when they make, or, or even, you know, if you're in a brick and mortar classroom, you're making an assignment for the students. The students say, oh, but I just got an assignment in my chemistry class, you know. Uh, you doesn't, you know, you're overloading students without realizing. Uh, so it's a hard one to grasp, but I think this is, Padlet is obviously very interesting, uh, but you need to somehow take it into a level where learning occurs. And I guess that's, uh, that's what I would do. I would make each, my assessment would be that each student takes something from that and then produce something that they give me, um, you know, within whatever parameters I set for them. Um, yes, Harshita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi. So I actually agree with uh, you and Rosemary because there is an absolutely paradigm shift when you are teaching online. It is not the same as a classroom teaching that you can throw away a, a host of activities and homework at students and expect them to complete the assessment. Because this, there has to be a different set of activities that uh, they need to take. And uh, what you're talking about, uh, using Padlet for assessment. I agree because, oh, you know, when, uh, there are multiple students and number of students who are using Padlet uh, for an activity. How would you assess and how would you get to know um, who has uh, actually completed the task? So that is where the website um, integration of Padlet on your website comes in when you would have an LMS and, uh, for example, Moodle. And if you have an LMS, you have uh, your students uh, there who log into the LMS and then they attend the activities. And that is how you can actually get to know their progress through uh, the, uh, the entire course or taking specific activities. And uh, yeah, so uh, basically having a website, uh, an LMS enabled website where you can have a host of activities and interactive learning happening. You can have subgroups within a class and assign them project work. Because when students work together collaboratively, um, they get self-motivated to complete it. And um, so that is where the entire use of an LMS, you know, for the learner and the teacher both happens so yeah that's that's how you can use yeah. it properly okay. yes uh jane and i are back channeling here uh it's lunchtime uh, i i mean i didn't get breakfast because i i was doing this before that so uh, and we've been going for two hours now almost two hours and i think wow. I'm, to, <laughs> I'm sorry uh, really no i think great uh, two great presentations and actually I was uh, that was my idea was to have these sessions and be able to have time to talk to the presenters and uh, find out more about them and get into some discussion and that's exactly what is taking place but um, uh, our stomachs are starting to tell us maybe we should end and also we don't want to make the video go too long because uh, but it's been very a very fruitful discussion, and um, if you want to continue it, we could you could use Talon, which I could. Uh, I'll, I'll let me just grab the screen share a minute if you don't mind. Okay, uh, so and we can use VoiceThread. Yes, well, you can use many tools. Uh, Talon is the uh, something that if you want to continue discussing, anybody can grab the site and schedule events anytime they want. And that's just, uh, uh, oops, something that, oh, something's going crazy here. Okay, something that, um, that, that would be a way to extend the conversation if you're interested. So um, I'll put the, 
I'll put something in the text chat about it. So anyhow, uh, this is part two of Learning Together, episode four, four or five. And uh, we're having, uh, th these are all being blogged and recorded. And we have another session tonight. In fact, I, I suspect that um, Cheryl and Jane, who were supposed to be presenting at uh, about 45 minutes ago, I think they probably got the times mixed up by 12, or maybe I did, I don't know, but anyway, nobody caught it. So um, I, possibly they will want to be added later on. But we do have room to squeeze them in, so uh, that would work. But anyway, uh, they're not here now, but that gave everyone, they gave us all time to, to really uh, have a good discussion. And uh, this is April 4th, 2020, and this is also Best of EVO, uh, the online version. And it's been really great to have everybody here. So let me see if I can get it. Oops. Thank you, Vanus. Yes, thank you. I'm just trying to grab this uh, Talon links here. Okay, put that in this session here. There we go. Oh, didn't actually. Ooh, you have an Apple computer? Me? I have a PC. Oh. Why? Just use uh, this one, Chrome, because here you can do, you know, download the, all these little things, uh, like, for example, this one reads the pages for you, this one turns them into Word documents, this one shortens the links for you, this one, let me see, right Oh, we're using my screen share right now, but... Uh, yes. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. anyway, I I think that would be this would be a great thing that you should go to Talon and put yourself in to come and do a webinar for us about all this extra knowledge that you have, which we would really like to benefit from. And uh, I think it's better if we do it in shorter spurts. That's one reason I started learning together. They started from three day conferences, seventy two hours at a stretch. Did three of them, and uh, I decided not. We're going to. Uh, hey, one one thing though, before we go, Jimmy, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, can, Jimmy, can you say hi or goodbye? Yes. Can you can you take us out of here? Jimmy, <laughs> hello, hello. I am from Peru. Uh, hi, it it is Friday. It's a Friday now. What what time is now? You um, um it, Vance? It's Saturday here, but it's in the yeah, Friday. It's Friday yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, in Peru, in Peru, in South America, it's Friday here. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, around, it's around, it's uh, around yeah, 11, yeah. 11 oh, there. Uh, in Vans, where are you? Where are you from? Oh, I'm in Penang. I'm, I'm in Penang, and Jane is in Taipei. Taipei. And they are oh, both Taipei. same time zone. It's same time zone. Where are you? Mm. Oh, yeah. But what Where? time is this now? Is it Saturday there? Saturday, Saturday. morning. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right now, kind of it's a night in my country. Where are, Michael? Michael? Michael is a, Where are you, Michael? Where are Michael? you, Michael? I'm, I'm in England. 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 Oh, beautiful. Uh, okay. uh, no. Minus four, plus four. Ooh, dumb. But, but Michael, right? it, is, uh, it is around six morning. Yes, Michael? And, and no, plus four. Plus four. So oh. almost four a.m. Oh, early morning. Yes. In, yeah, yes. early morning. It's uh, you know, about the GMT. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, okay. In London. Yeah. It was coming up. I thought, oh well, I'll pop in. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, it's yeah. good to see all of you here. Yeah, yes, thank you. you. I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. I'm going okay. to bed. To rest. Well, yeah. see you in the morning. morning. 12, 12 hours okay. from now, we'll be here. We'll be wrapping yes. up. So it's uh, uh, yeah. 2 p.m. Uh, UTC, a better hour for Michael. And <laughs> you can find the links at, the, uh, yeah. at our uh, tinyurl.com slash best, uh, best 2020 EVO. All right. Okay. All right. Well, so I'll see you Wait. later, and thank you very oh, much. Oh. See you later. Thank yeah. you, Ben. Bye. Thank you. you. Oh, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Rosemary, for your sharing. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Oh yeah, yeah. I got it. Thank you. Did you send the link? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, if you put links okay. in the in the yeah, text yeah. chat here, yeah. they will go into yeah, in the, the chat. Blog. Yes, oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 I'm always navigating. Stop the recording. There we go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jimmy.